Hello, we're here today to talk about breastfeeding. Hi, Mary. Hi, Jarsha. So good to be here today. I'm going to share my screen now so you can see what we talk about. And how uh, we think about the evolved nest. Yeah, and this is such an important component. Yes. So it's number two uh, on our list, just because birth is first, you can't start breastfeeding unless you're born. So <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Uh, so I'm going to take our pictures off so that I, we can talk while we go through the PowerPoint. Are you ready, Mary? I'm ready. All right, so what are we doing? Well, we want to welcome you to evolvednest.org explained. As you can see, my name is Darsha Narvaez and I'm here with Mary Tarsha. We're both at the University of Notre Dame's Department of Psychology and the Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies. In these uh, PowerPoint discussions about the Evolved Nest components, we explain what it means uh, what we know now, uh, well, it's our very brief reviews of what we know about each component. So here's a first, uh, a quick review of the evolved nest. Humans evolved to be nested. Humanity's nest for young children helps optimize children's development, fostering, thriving, flourishing, resilience in children of all ages. So what does that nest look like? This is it. So you can see we're, we're focusing on number two there. And these components are what every child needs to thrive and reach their potential. The evolved nest then includes soothing perinatal experiences, on request breastfeeding, positive touch, moving touch, and no negative touch, positive welcoming climate, self-directed social play, allo mothers, allo parents, other mothers, the community, the village, to help raise the child, responsive relationships, nature connection, deeply um, feeling like you have a place on the earth, and then healing practices because we all make mistakes and need to repair our relationships or heal ourselves. So we are looking at how these components affect child thriving. And when we think about what children need to thrive, we're talking about physical health, happiness and well-being, self-acceptance and confidence, self-control, emotional intelligence, social skills and sociality, empathy, perspective taking, kindness, and active curiosity. Those are just a few things, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and each of these components, as we've said before, has a wealth of research, empirical research, and ethnographic research, neuroscientific evidence about them. And so we thought it would be really helpful just to look at each component individually. So that's what we're doing today, taking a look at a brief, quick snapshot, but also in depth at times of the value, the importance, and really the awesomeness of breastfeeding. Yeah. So let's get going. Here we go. Why do babies need breast milk? Such a good question. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us, Mary? Yeah, so start with actually uh, breast milk is so important and the act of breastfeeding involves both this physical connection, psychological connection, but it also involves the actual substance of the milk itself. And so all of these things are taking place simultaneously, both of them, but to understand them, we separate them, right? So we just look at the milk first and say, what exactly is makes mammalian milk, makes human milk so important? And there are a lot of things. And one of them is that species, it's species specific. So for each mammal, they make their own specific type of milk. And even for each mother, they make a specific type of milk that is uh, giving the child what the, what the child needs at that right time. And we'll go more into what, what that means, but we see that the milk itself is alive. 80% <laughs> of it is alive with all kinds of probiotics and prebiotics. It has a balanced spectrum of both macro and micronutrients, enzymes and growth factors, hormones, and this perfect combination of probiotics 
that the infant needs right when they need it for both brain development and gut development, gut function. So why breastfeed? So we have special specific needs for breast milk. We're born actually with gastric enzymes only for breast milk ingestion, not for any other foods. And so those other foods upset our systems and it takes a while for babies to learn to digest anything else. And the difference, uh, as we've said, is that every mammal has its own milk, its own tailored milk for its young. And so if you give babies another mother's milk, uh, another species mother's milk, they're not going to get what they need exactly, and they may get an upset stomach and digestive <laughs> system. What's interesting too is that human breast milk is thin, not thick. So there's thick and thin kinds of breast milk. The thick ones usually the predators have because they have to leave their babies for hours to go find food. But humans is thin, meaning that it's, uh, it's ready to be ingested routinely, frequently. And for a newborn, it's every 20 minutes or even more frequently because the stomach is so tiny, it's like the size of a quarter, you know, a bottle cap. Uh, and so they really need it a lot because of all those good things in it. Mm -hmm. And it also passes through the baby very quickly, as anyone knows of taking care of an infant that um, is a, a breastfed baby, there are many diapers, but that's because the breast milk is just passing so easily through the infant's digestive tract flooding the, the body and brain with the nutrients it needs to grow so quickly in those first months and years. So that's so important to have the right biochemistry so the good growth occurs. Mm -hmm. And one, la one last thing is that it's mostly lactose, our milk, human milk, rather than protein, which cow's milk has more of, it has a different balance. So that's why it upsets the stomach and system. All right, so how about breastfeeding length? This is always a, <gasps> yes. <laughs> oh my God, ready to be shocked. <laughs> okay, so we are primates and we have a lot of cousins, primates, monkeys, but apes also. Uh, and what do the primate models show us? How long do they breastfeed their infants? <clears throat> primates, six years. With, that's the range, and the average age of weaning is four years old. How about our, our ancestors? That means those who lived in small band hunter-gatherer communities. That's 99% of our history as a genus was in that kind of society. Uh, it's only recently this little tiny percent that we've been in civilization. And uh, so we have to think about, you know, where's our baseline for what's optimal for our species? And that, that provides us with that kind of baseline. Whoa! They go even to eight years <laughs> have been observed by the anthropologist. But again, the average age of weaning is four years old. So that means a lot of people, a lot of infants have more than four years of milk and some have less. And then, so we probably should, well, we will talk about why that is happening. Why would that species evolve four years of breastfeeding at least? The WHO, the World Health Organization, recommends two years of breastfeeding, at least. That's the minimum. Uh, and they uh, observing uh, around the world what leads to better outcomes. James Prescott says two and a half years because he studied uh, peaceful societies. And they would carry and breastfeed their, uh, carry their children around all the time. That's a separate issue, touch. Uh, but also breastfeed for two and a half years. So that's what he recommends for a peaceful society. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends one year, <clears throat> in part because they think American moms won't do more than that, which I think is selling moms short. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also not um, taking on the responsibility, and we'll, we'll talk about this later, of how breastfeeding is really a communal act and that moms need a lot of support uh, to be able to, to breastfeed for that long period of time. And so it's taking responsibility off the community and off different policies saying, you know, we don't have to make sure these things are in place in order to protect nursing mothers, right? Um, yeah. 
So it is a, a system wide issue. It's not just moms responsible to figure it out. Yes. It's the community, the institutions, the policies that are uh, and the supports that are built into the society. These are all part of how, how long you're going to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions people have, or they assume actually women don't need to be taught how to breastfeed. It should come automatically, right? Well, it is natural. <laughs> so that yeah. is true. Breastfeeding is natural, but it also requires practice and inexperienced moms receive help, can receive help from lactation consultants and from other experienced women, you know, other moms know how to nurse, uh, know how to breastfeed. And so mom's opinions about their breastfeeding abilities also really affect their supply of milk. So that's really important, their perceptions and their opinions about what they can do. And they can't make it happen. They, they it, it's something that comes instinctively and you need to relax about it, lean back, you know, and trust your body uh, because you can't force it. It's not like, you know, driving your car down the road or something. You, you don't have a lot of control over it. So we have to have the systems in place where moms are supported, feel supported, feel confident, and have had their own experience of breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And also um, understanding of what they can do to help support it. You can't control it, but simple things like self-care and nutrition and hydration and rest, all of these things contribute to your supply of milk as well. And feeding, uh, breastfeeding right away after birth. Uh, and uh, every time the baby starts to get a little wiggly, <laughs> a little restless, Put them to the nipple and, and let them suckle, even if they're not getting anything. It actually calms that baby. It mm -hmm. helps the breast realize, oh, there's a baby nearby. I better get busy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More milk, right? So you want to breastfeed a lot in the beginning uh, because that then uh, trains up your body to realize you've got a baby to support for months ahead, right? Mm -hmm. so you don't do it very much. Your body doesn't recognize the need to do very much of it, prepare very much. Yeah, yeah, you know, Darsha, you bring up a good point because that suckling that's taking place, it's so beneficial for the mother and the baby. And so the baby is being comforted by that suckling. And so oftentimes, you know, moms will think, well, you know, I can tell I'm empty. The child isn't receiving any milk. You know, maybe the baby shouldn't be suckling here. But actually what's happening is that there's communication and synchrony taking place. And so the baby is communicating, you know, the need for more milk and that suckling is stimulating the production of more milk to come. And so everything is within synchrony so that if you know, uh, instinctively, if the baby knows there's going to be a growth spurt, you know, he or she will suckle more. So then it gets ready for an increase in production of milk. And so all of this is happening, um, this dynamic experience at the same time. And so you're not aware of exactly what's going on, but your body is just doing it. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. And we, we talk about breastfeeding on request. That means the, the ball is in the court of the baby. That means responding to the baby's signals to need for the need to suckle, whether they're going to get something, uh, getting milk or not, right? Yes, exactly. All right, so we've said uh, the milk is thin, not thick, uh, human milk. It's expected to be ingested frequently. Every 20 minutes is recorded by the anthropologist. We've said too that uh, up to eight years has been recorded. The length they've seen on it uh, among societies that have been studied are two to five years, averages meaning for four years of four years. Mm -hmm. But five to seven years of breast milk is really required for a, an immune system to be to reach adult level functioning. Yeah, that's just amazing, yeah. isn't it? Just amazing. So milk has the immunoglobulins to build the immune system and you know formula just doesn't have most of the stuff we're talking about here 
Right, and the immunoglobulins and also the sugars within the breast milk are so powerful in terms of helping to build the immune system and function as a really specialized uh, form of antibiotics. So it's also preventative and protective against any type of infections and um, bacterial infections, and, as well as viral infections. It's just awesome. And milk has the uh, has ingredients galactoproteins, I think, that feed the bacteria, the good bacteria for your gut, because your immune system is mostly in your gut. And uh, the baby cannot digest without those bacteria, can't digest very well, but the milk provides the food for those bacteria too. Mm -hmm. so, oh, here we go. We were talking about immunoglobulins. That's right. Yeah. You want to talk? Yeah. yeah, so we see that human breast milk has these five basic immunoglobulins, IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD, and IgE, and they're specific to the environment in which the mother and the infant finds themselves. So for example, if the mother encounters a particular type of um, antibody or infection, mother will produce antibodies against that agent that are in the vicinity and provide that to the infant. And so it's this, uh, it's more powerful and effective and healthy than a flu shot, say, for example, right, that you're being protected against the flu. If the mother encounters some type of flu, the mother will already start producing these antibodies for the infant so that it's protective, so that the, the infant is protected. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. So people are off. Yeah, what about formula, Darsha? <laughs> uh oh <laughs> people often think oh breast milk yeah that's better but you know formula is pretty good isn't it it's the same is it right no it's not the same <laughs> oh it's so different so let's just look first at the uh, differences of gut flora right there's different ratios in formula fed versus breastfed kids so formula fed kids have don't have as much of a good gut flora. That means that that microorganisms that keep you healthy uh, compared to breastfed kids. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's big differences on average between those who are breastfed and bottle fed. Uh, there's differences in how they actually experience life, right? So in, in breastfed children, they, they get to look at their moms more in the eyes, right? Not at first, because they, they can't see very well yet. Uh, but after a while, they start to look for mom and look for her face and love her face. And then they're taught, they're touched. Uh, they have to be touched to breastfeed, right? Some bottle feeding uh, parents, I've, I see them uh, in public and elsewhere feeding their baby like it's a car. They're, they're <laughs> gassing up mm. the car and just kind of putting it in their mouth, doing something else at the same time. Mm -hmm. They're not getting the same not always, but they're not getting the same kind of stimulation. And that mutual touching is good for mom too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a big difference in the skin to skin contact and with the bottle too, even, you know, you can position the bottle so that you're not even holding the bottle, you know, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what about, are there differences between um, infants and children? Uh, who have been, who have received breast milk and have breastfed all their life versus those who have received formula? Yes. So let's make it clear, though, that most of the studies of breastfeeding uh, versus formula feeding are comparing three months of difference, not four years. So there's no study that I've ever seen that goes beyond a year even. Maybe there's something out there, but I haven't seen it. And so when we talk about the differences of um, having formula or breast milk, we're going to see that this is just with a limited amount of it. And already there are big differences. So higher IQ scores on those who are breastfed, mm -hmm. greater visual acuity. Now this one was nine months of different, this was somehow they ethically got past <laughs> their review board to do this study where nine months of breast milk and nine months of formula. <laughs> they, yeah, can we go back to the higher, higher IQ? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. 
you know, but it makes sense when we think about from that first slide of what is present in breast milk. It's everything to support neurological development. Uh, right, the oligosaccharides, everything that we mentioned. And so it's facilitating myelinization, it's facilitating brain growth. And so therefore, I mean, it makes sense, you know, that you're going to have a difference in IQ here. Yes, and, I, and there is one study that looked at three months of breast milk, three months of formula, and looked at myelinization of the brain and found that means the uh, nerve endings, neuron, neuron endings, are being coded to be protected, but also to signal other neurons, which is uh, related to IQ. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually see it in the biology uh, that there is a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the myelinization is, you know, these neurons are developing really well in their connectivity. They're able to communicate more effectively and more efficiently to each other. And that's coming from the breast milk is helping coat those neurons and create that myelin sheath around them. Right. And the greater visual acuity, this is just one sense that's, uh, vision is easy to study, so uh, that's probably why it was done. But um, in the societies where breast milk, uh, at least two years, probably at least four years is given, those people tend to have, the, those adults tend to have better sensory perception generally. Mm. They can see better. They can see the nine uh, moons of Jupiter with the naked eye. They wow. can see better, you know, a uh, plane coming uh, 70 miles away or things like that. These are things the anthropologists report and they're just always rather amazed. <laughs> That's that is amazing. <laughs> Have such senses. That's amazing. And what about infection uh, in terms yes, of... So less infection and disease. And we have a list of things. Let's see if that's coming. It's coming. So we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. Right. So breast milk is providing the neurotransmitters such as tryptophan and serotonin. And these are so critical for uh, intelligence, but also for your mental health and for the stability of your mood. And so we see serotonin is key for the neuronal signaling, and it's also important for immune system function. And then um, serotonin also for, for tryptophan for your mood and for sleep, it's very commonly well known. And we see that it's tailored for the needs of that particular baby at that particular time. And I think that just cannot be uh, understated. I mean, we keep repeating that, but it's really important that it's dynamic. So breast milk changes for what the baby needs at a, a different time. And on here, I think, uh, I'm not sure if we say this later, also it helps set the circadian rhythm, right, of the sleep. And I know you just mentioned that in your recent blog as well. Right. Yeah. And they, they call this now chrononutrition. So the milk, the breast milk in the morning is uh, has ingredients that energizes the child. And the milk in the evening has the tryptophan, more tryptophan uh, to calm and make the baby sleepy. Mm -hmm. And so if you're, if you're bottling your breast milk, you need to label what time of day you're, you're uh, pumping because otherwise you might be giving the wrong kind of milk to the baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's just incredible because it's not only changing per baby per time, it's changing throughout the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just awesome. And it, and it takes a few months for the baby to develop their circadian rhythm. So the breast milk is helping. If you're not breastfeeding, then uh, you need to use different ways of helping the baby develop that kind of being awake at, during the day and sleeping at night. So you have to have the lights low at night so that they don't keep them awake and sunshine in the morning, things like that. Well, here's a list of things mm -hmm. that breast milk protects against. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, big list. True. Yeah. Why don't you? Well, I right. mean, people can read it, right? Sudden so infant death syndrome. So, in formula-fed children, infants are more likely to die of SIDS than mm -hmm. our children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important. That's Something right. that's uh, kind of minimized in the public knowledge because uh, we should say formula companies have a lot of power, uh, and they 
in the states especially get to advertise and tell you what to think and you know how great it is formula and uh and, and they're even against the world health organization's directives to not allow advertising for formula so mm -hmm. that moms do breastfeed and don't think formulas is good Mm -hmm. And part of that protection with breast milk against SIDS is that, as we've said many times, breast milk is thin, and so it's re the infant is requiring it frequently, and so the infant throughout the night is, is nursing and is receiving that stimulation of breathing and taking in foods. But what happens, this is happening continually, continually, continually throughout the night, but when you have formula, right? It takes the baby so much longer because it's not this perfect balance. Um, and so the, the body of the baby is working much harder to digest that formula. So they're going into a much deeper sleep, right? And they're supposed to be aroused frequently throughout the night. And so this makes sense in terms of how it protects against sudden infant death syndrome because they need that arousal throughout the night. Right. Because they still are learning how to breathe. They're used to having the placenta just give them oxygen mm -hmm. stored in the liver. And then the breathing is different. The way the, the pumping of oxygen goes in the fetus is the opposite of what you need to actually get air in your lungs mm -hmm. and use the diaphragm in the opposite way. So uh, it takes a lot of, of guidance to learn how to be <laughs> in the outside the womb. That's right. So it's an artificial... Uh, state of this this deep sleep that they're being put into, right? Yeah. So, but but there are other things for the mother as well that it also protects against that we have listed here. Uh, right, and we'll get to the mother later too. But it also for high blood pressure, but the nursing is also protective against developing high blood pressure um, as well as cancers too. Right. Yeah. And then for the baby, um, all these things, right? Less depressed, fewer allergies, fewer in ear infections, dental problems. That's a more recent issue. Uh, they're finding that uh, 300 years ago, our skulls were different. And the big change was that mothers went to work in the textile factories and then stopped breastfeeding as long. And so then you have smaller palates and jaws and sleep problems galore. Um, mm. uh, and dental problems, the orthodontics are needed uh, as a result of that decreased amount of breastfeeding. All right, so let's go on to the list from the uh, Surgeon General back in 2011 when they got concerned about the low rates of breastfeeding in the U.S. They started to talk more about it at the federal level. And these again are similar kinds of um, problems that uh, show the higher risk for example, asthma, respiratory problems, um, more hospitalization in the first year mm -hmm. for lower respiratory tract diseases, all sorts of things that are uh, you're, you're taking a risk then when you're not breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Here's more specific information. The in, immunoglobulins, we said, are protecting uh, infants from microorganisms, infections, infectious agents, and colost colostrum, that uh, liquid that comes out of the breasts after birth first, before the milk comes in, has higher levels of secretory, secretory uh, IgA, which is an immunoglobulin that provides intestinal protection against various things like poliovirus and mm -hmm. bacteria like E. coli. And mm -hmm. lots of vitamin K in it, so uh, that prevents bleeding and other um, problems. So when you don't breastfeed, you have to give the baby a vitamin K shot often. Mm -hmm. oh. And you know, something we haven't said, but I love that you say this in other places, is that mother's breasts are like science labs. Because they're providing for the baby what they need when they need it. And when you look at this slide, I mean, that's what I think of what comes to mind. All of this is present in human breast milk, you know, and this is just a little bit. <laughs> this isn't an, an exhaustive list of everything that is present in there that's good for the baby. Right. I was just looking at a book called Milk um, by uh, Shulk and, and a colleague. And they say, oh, at the end, the research shows that, you know, um, formula or breastfed children tend to have less vitamin D and iron. 
And so supplements would be good. And I'm thinking, come on, give it to the mom. It's the mom who doesn't have enough vitamin D and iron. That's right. Right. And then she gives it to her child through the breast milk. So there's a lot of misguided uh, advice that you see all the time in the paper. And I've complained at the New York Times about their headlines because they'll, they'll say something about, oh, look, formula has vitamin K in it now or has, you know, iron, whatever. It's tryptophan. <laughs> <laughs> right. They added tryptophan. And they won't say, you know, breast milk has all this already and more <laughs> and Gosh. right proportions, human, not fake kind of tryptophan, that kind of thing. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> So, mm. outcomes correlated with breast milk. Uh, these are things, again, with that small amount of breast milk we talked about, right? Probably three months, maybe six months, is studies with those little bits. Graduating from high school, being emotionally stable, having positive mental health, higher intelligence, we've already said, less substance abuse and addiction, and better health overall. Mm. Yeah, really fantastic. So, conclusion here is breastfeeding is much more than the intake of ingredients. Mm -hmm. Oh, but come, come on, everyone. Say, <laughs> formula feeding easier? Okay, what do we know? Well, bottles and formula have to be sterile and well-prepared. Infants are most vulnerable to viruses and bacteria infection during their first year of life, and so you have to be careful. And it takes time to, be, to prepare properly. How much time? Yes. Hmm. How much time does it take to prepare <laughs> a bottle of properly yeah. so that your your infant child does not get an infection? <laughs> right. right. And this was prepared by, uh, uh, this was all tested by Stephanie Susweirda and Elizabeth Ledden, some students of mine a few years ago. <coughs> so they first have to sanitize the bottles and the formula scoop. And they have to measure out the proper amount of formula and the water ratio. They have to shake it very well. You have to evenly heat the bottle. Not in the microwave. Feed the baby. Burp the baby. And then clean the bottle for the next time the baby wants to eat. So how long does all of this take, these seven steps? Well, here you go. So adding this all up, each of them, you can see eight, two, seven, 10, 15, another seven. Not, not 10 and 15, because that happens with breastfeeding. Okay. But just the red, things in red. Takes 27 extra minutes. So. 26. <laughs> 26, sorry, extra minutes. <laughs> right. So once you've got breastfeeding down, you figure it out. It takes a little while to figure out, right? But once you've got it, it's quick, right? <clears throat> so how is breastfeeding better for babies? Changes with the needs of the child. As we have said that, yes. So formula is constant. Doesn't change. Mm. Critical is the baby controls the size of each mouthful, so it doesn't overeat. Formula doesn't. It puts the, the power, the control in the hands of the adult who decides how much that baby should have and forces it down sometimes <laughs> and leads to, is linked to obesity, perhaps for that reason. <clears throat> so the baby's regulating how much he eats, not with formula, and the baby stops when he's full not with formula. Mm -hmm. How about, how's the baby protected through breastfeeding? The immune system, as we've talked about. Sudden infant death syndrome, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, cancer, diabetes, obesity, depression, allergies, and being a picky eater. How about formula? Ooh. Pow. Yes. Pow. <laughs> <laughs> really something, isn't it? And then formula, nope. Fails on all these accounts. Mm. Why is breastfeeding good for mothers? Mm. Reduces risk of breast and ovarian cancer. Reduces risk of diabetes. 
reduces weight from pregnancy, reduces depression, and encourages bonding with the child. Excellent. Wonder Woman. <laughs> Woo! A love formula? Ooh. None of these things. <laughs> Can a mom breastfeed if she smokes? Is depressed on most medication, on birth control, or has had cosmetic sur breast surgery? Yes. Yes. You need to check with your doctor on the medication part. That debunks a lot of myths, though, I think. Yes. How about and what about the cost? Yeah. Yes, the cost <laughs> of formula. Well, the students did this uh, calculation a few years ago, too. So here it is. $40 a week. The total would be $161 a month. So that's formula and the, the bottled water. And the total for the year, almost $2,000 a year. Now, wouldn't you rather eat well? <laughs> <with that? laughs> so they have, you know, the mom should be eating well when they nurse too, right? And yeah. Water and things. Uh, wouldn't you rather spend it on that? <laughs> yes, on delicious, nutritious food. So yeah. yes, for the mother. <laughs> oh. So that was that. Sorry, there's more here. I forgot. So there's a sanitizer you have to buy, a bottle warmer because you can't do it in the microwave, the bottles you need, and the bottle brush. And <laughs> compared to breastfeeding. <laughs> yeah, breastfeeding is free. Breastfeeding is free. That's right. <gasps> what about dad? Yes, so babies have other needs as well and need things in addition to breast milk, but they also need responsiveness in many forms. They need that touch, continual touch, which involves the skin to skin contact and multiple caregivers, which is a whole component of the Evolve Nest, which we'll talk about later. But dads are so important for helping to provide all of these things. I think we have another slide about that. <laughs> yes, and I also provide companionship, the caring and the rocking, and of course, play. So important. Yeah. So in summary, infant formula has a limited set of ingredients in the wrong proportions. They're not human ingredients. Breastfeeding promotes health and optimal growth in all brain and body systems. Among our cousins and ancestors, it lasted two to eight years or higher with an average age weaning age of four, and really five to seven years are needed for the immune system to develop to adult level functioning, so more is better. But the Evolve Nest, as we keep pointing out, is a community obligation. This is not just moms that have to figure it all out on their own. This is our community has to step in, step up, and make it easy to breastfeed, to mm -hmm. have parental leave so you can do it which we don't have in the States. Yeah, even just an attitudinal change, you know, yes. when, from other uh, women in the, your own family or within your neighborhood or community that are breastfeeding, you know, you can see that as they are helping optimize the development of that child biologically, neurobiologically, psychobiologically, every way, you know, and really encouraging women, encouraging mothers, and that act of love that they're giving to their children by breastfeeding. Yes, welcoming the child and providing what the child needs is what the Evolved Nest is about. Thanks to Stephanie and Liz. <clears throat> Thank you for listening. And we'll, we'll uh, go through the references here in case you want to stop the PowerPoint to look at them, but look for more information at evolvednest.org and also at these places. <clears throat> so here are the references. I'm just going to scroll through so that you can stop it if you need. And Mary, you have any other things you want to say? It's just a breast breastfeeding is a, a phenomenal gift that we can give to our infants and children, and we should all and can all support mothers uh, in this great act.
And wonderful. Thanks for being with us, everybody. And uh, let me just uh, put our pictures back up so that people can see us and we can say bye. Take care.